Hello everyone, welcome to Coding with Chandler. Today's tutorial is going to be on the use effect hook. If you've seen my previous React tutorial, we talked a little bit about the use state hook. Today, we are going to be talking about use effect. Before we get started, we must ask ourselves, what is use effect? Use effect is a hook that is called on every re-render of the component. Another way to think about use effect is that it's called on every change that's happening in your component. So like data fetching, maybe your state changes, your props change. Anything that triggers a change in your component is what would trigger use effect. If you were originally working with React classes, you may have heard of component did mount and component did update. Component did mount is a lifecycle function called after the component has mounted. Component did update is called when something like state or props have been updated. Think of use effect as a combination of those two lifecycle functions. Now let's take a look at a little example of use effect. Here we have a component called styled text and we're calling use effect. So ideally every re-render we should get a console.log use effect was called. And if use effect is used properly, you can make a lot of decisions and are given some control over what happens during certain times in the lifecycle of your component. What's cool about use effect is that it can be manipulated. You can adjust use effect to meet your needs and only call it under certain circumstances. For example, instead of calling use effect every time the component re-renders, I only want to call it every time props.color changes. Use effect gives us the power to run some additional code after the React DOM has been updated in some way, and it doesn't require a lot of maintenance or cleanup. Now before we dig deeper into the code, I'm going to show you guys an example of what I have built today that can help us understand use effect a lot better. Today, I developed a simple example on how use effect can be used. This is a simple component that just asks the user to enter in some text. So for example, I can enter in my name, and then as you can see, that text displays below. And we have the power to change the color of that text, so I can make it red, blue, green, or change it back to black again. Very simple, there's nothing really complex about this component, but that's what we'll be using today to sort of gain an understanding on how use effect works. If you want, you can clone this from my GitHub repository, I'll put the link in the description below, and you're free to use this component in any way you would like. Now let's take a dive into the code. As you can see, the component is called TextMaker, and I have that imported into my app component. So the only component we should see in the browser is this TextMaker component, which is everything that we see here. TextMaker keeps track of two things, the user's input and the color that they select, which by default will be black. For that, we're using the use state hook. And if you don't have an understanding around the use state hook, I recommend you check out my use state tutorial. I'll be sure to link that in the description below so that you can check that out. But basically, in short, we're keeping track of two things in this component. Whatever they enter into the input field right here, as you can see, I have an on change attribute. And within that attribute, we're calling handle input change. So every time I enter something in the input field, we call set input. And that's what's setting the input and allows me to pass it down to this style text component down below. Then we keep track of the color. So as you can see, I have this button container here that holds four different buttons. It holds a red button, a blue button, a green button, and a black button. That's the buttons that you see here. And on click of each button, we call handle color change, which allows us to keep track of the color that they selected. We call set color which then sets the color to whatever they selected, depending on the value. So if I clicked the red button, then we set color to red. Again, these two values, input and color, are being passed down to this styled text component over here. Let's go into that component and see what it does. Styled text is simply responsible for displaying the text that it is given. So as you can see, we have this paragraph tag here that is displaying props.text. Whatever text we pass into this component will be shown to the browser. So we entered Chandler into the input field here, we set that in our state, and then we pass it down to the styled text component which then displays it down here. Very simple. And then we take in a color as well. As you can see, I'm calling props.color. We made a const called style, and it holds the style color. And what's really neat is that you can pass style attributes into the element itself without using CSS. So what I did here is I made an object that takes in color, and then we pass in props.color here, which allows us to change the color of the paragraph by passing it into the style attribute. We'll pay attention more to use effect in a second here. So overall, you should have a pretty decent understanding of how this component works. It is responsible for taking in some input. You can enter anything you would like. Every time the input changes, we set that in the state and we pass it into our styled text component down here 
which is just simply responsible for displaying the text. And because style text takes in text, it can easily display the changes that we make. And since it takes in a color, any color we select and store in our state, we pass down to style text, which will then trigger a color change. Again, this code is on my GitHub. If you want, you can take a deeper look into it. You can use it for your own purposes. I am totally fine with that. Let me know in the comments below if something isn't clear about this component. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to talk more about use effect and how it works. So I decided not to make this into a code along and more of an educational tutorial that you can just sit down and listen to. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, use effect is called on every render. So anything that causes the component to re-render or change on the DOM is going to trigger use effect. So knowing that use effect is called on every change, we should expect to get a console.log use effect called on every time I enter something into the input field or when I change the color. Because those are the only things that can cause this component to change, right? We only have two props in this component, props.color and props.text. So if anything changes within these props, again, you should expect use effect called. So let's go back to our browser and I'm going to inspect the page so that we can see the console. I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, use effect was called only one time. We see use effect in our console. We didn't really do anything yet. The component only mounted. So again, every time the component mounts or changes, we should see use effect is triggered. So now I'm going to start entering in some text. Let's enter the letter C. Use effect is called, right? Which makes sense because originally styled text, the component didn't have any props at all. Now that we entered something, we pass down the letter C to the style text component, which is considered to be a change. So every time you enter a letter, again, use effect is called, we are triggering use effect. So I typed in Chandler and use effect was called eight times. We can also change the color and expect use effect to be called, as you can see in the console. And every time I make a change, we will see that use effect is called. Hope that makes sense. But what's really neat about use effect is that we can manipulate it so that it's not called every time the component re-renders or updates. Sometimes we don't want that because, well, you're calling it too much. What if you're making an API call in here? That means you're making an API call every single time something changes, which isn't ideal. What if I only wanted to call use effect whenever props.color changes instead? What we can do is add a new argument inside the useEffect function. The first argument is this arrow function here, which is responsible for taking in any behavior we add. Right now, we just added a console log. The second parameter can be whatever you want useEffect to change by. So I can enter an empty array in here and then pass in props.color. I'm gonna press save here. What this is going to do is make sure use effect is only called when props.color changes. So every time we select a color button, we should see a console.log use effect called. Just going to refresh the page. Now I'm going to enter in some text. And as you can see, we're not getting any logs from use effect. That's because the use effect hook isn't triggered on props.text. It's triggered from props.color. So let's select a color. As you can see, I selected red and we got a new use effect called log gonna keep selecting those and pretty much every time the color changes we get a new log. As you can see here use effect was called 10 times because I changed the color nine times. Once for when the component mounted and then nine times for each time I changed the color of the text. But what if I only wanted to call use effect when the text changes? We can easily change this to props.text. I'm gonna press save there. And once you refresh your page, I'm going to enter in some text. And as you can see, use effect is being called every time I enter in a new letter in the input or even when I backspace. However, if I press any of these colors here, it's not triggering a new use effect call. That's because we are only expecting changes or we're only listening for changes in props.txt. However, what if you only wanted to call use effect one time, not on every re-render, not on every change, but what if I simply just wanted to call use effect when the component mounts 
We saw that use effect is called on mount and on every change, but what if I only wanted to call it on mount? What you would do is just simply pass in an empty array and not give it any arguments at all. So if you pass an empty array as your second argument into use effect, you should only expect use effect to be called once. As you can see, we already get a log that says use effect called. So every change that I make in this component, I should not see any more use effect logs. So I'm gonna enter in some text, Chandler, I'm gonna try to change the color, and use effect isn't being called anymore. That's because we only call it on mount while having this empty array object as our second argument. So that should give you a brief understanding of how use effect works. Within use effect, you can make any sort of decisions. You can set something in your state. You can make an API call. There's so many things you can do in use effect, and you can only do those things depending on what you pass into the second argument. If you pass in nothing as your second argument, it's always going to be called on every change. But if you only want to listen for certain changes, you can simply pass that in to this array block here. Very simple. You can even add state changes in here as well. Let's say I only wanted to listen for changes to the state. I would pass in something from the state as a value here. Use effect is really cool because it can be manipulated to kind of meet your needs. Rather than having all of these lifecycle functions from the React class, some of them are deprecated, some of them aren't. And it's a lot to keep track with when you can just use one simple hook and then pass in whatever you want to listen for. That is my tutorial on use effect. If you have any questions, go ahead and bombard me with them down in the comments below and I will get back to you. Use effect is sometimes a hard concept for people to grasp onto and I completely understand that. So feel free to throw any questions at me. Also, again, check out my GitHub. I post all of my code up there, any tutorial that is on coding with Chandler. The code for that tutorial has been posted to my GitHub. So if you wanna to refer to anything, feel free to go there. I'll be sure to link that in the description. If you wanna keep up to date with me on my Instagram, follow me on my Instagram at chandler.keys. Thank you so much for watching this React Crash Course. For those of you who watched all of the tutorials in full, congratulations, you have completed the course. And for those of you who are new or just visiting, feel free to check out my previous tutorials as well so that you can gain the basic understanding of modern day React. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon.